Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, my Father, for this wonderful revelation that you have given us. I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, for the revelation that we need to understand our Messiah in a much more deeper way. Our Messiah has come to pave the way for us. But we are trying to find every other way and we're trying to go through every other door as opposed to going through the door that he's already opened for us. And I thank you, Father, that in this Revelation chapter 4, the door that has been opened to us to a heavenly realm, you are saying, come up higher. Come up higher, my child, come up higher. What are you seeking for, my child? What do you seek for? What do you require? What is it that you are requiring in this hour that you think you're going to get from anywhere other than drinking from the cisterns of the living water that I have to give? If you continue to drink from the polluted cisterns of your religious things out there, you only get more mixed seed. But that which I have to give you is the pure living water that only I give. So I say to you today, my child, come up higher. I am the door that shows the way that you are to walk. I am the door that has already been opened for you to be able to go through. Do you not see? Do you not perceive? Do you not understand? I am all in all. What are you still looking for? What is it that you still require? I have done it all. I said it is finished. So if I said it is finished, that which I have done, all I need you to do is walk as I have walked. If I say that I am righteousness, then I expect you to walk in righteousness because I am righteous. If I say that I have come to be able to set you apart, then I expect you to walk in set-apartness because I am set apart. What is it that my children do not understand? What is it that my children are still trying to seek for? I have said it is finished. So all I need you to do is to sit with me. And if you come aside and if you sit with me, I will show you the way that you are to go. The scriptures are there to open up to you so that you may understand that way which is not my way. And there are many that are bringing a way that is not my way. And yet I say, come aside and let me show you the way, because my way is the path of truth. My way is the path of life. My way is the only way. And every other way will not bring you into the sheepfold. You cannot enter through any other gate. I am the gate. But my people still want to chase after more puffed up knowledge. That profits them nothing. And yet their relationship with me is so shallow. So I say, come up higher. Be seated with me in that heavenly place that I have already ordained for you to be seated with. I said it is finished. If you come up higher and you be seated with me, then I am the one who will lead, I am the one who will guide, and I am the one who will show. My way is perfect. There isn't another way. So my children, drink from the living water that I have to give you. Because all the other polluted water will only bring you into destruction. I have the water to drink that will only quench your thirst for eternity. But all the other water will still leave you thirsting. That is why I spoke and I said, I have the living water for you to drink so that you may never thirst again. But you're running around 
seeking, 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 will not give you the water that you require. Because the only one that you need to seek is me. And the more you seek me, the more you will find me. And the more you will find me, the more I will open up my ways and my thoughts and my heart to you for you to understand that I am the one that has given you life. I am the one who breathes life into you. I am the one that has called you by name. I am the one that has given you the destiny that you need to walk out. And allow me to take you by the hand and lead you into that which I have already spoken into your life before the foundations of the earth. That is the scroll that you will walk out if you come up higher and allow that door to be opened and to be seated with me in heavenly places. I wait. I wait, my children, I wait. Amen. Thank you, Abba. And I ask you to forgive us, Abba Yehua. Forgive us, Father. <laughs> forgive us, Father. I pray. Help us, Father. Help us to draw closer to you, my Father. Because in the days ahead, nothing else is going to matter. Your presence is all that we need. Your presence is the only presence that we need to keep us intact in the days ahead. You need to cover us with your wing. Draw us close to your bosom so that we can hear your heartbeat in our ears. And forgive us, Father, where we've allowed ourselves to become so busy with the things of this world. And for where we've neglected you in the process. Oh, Father, if we do not come and sit now, I know we're not going to make what's coming because I know that there's going to be a great falling away. And so I ask you to help us, Father. Because as we continue to proceed through this book, we will understand what's coming and that is why you are opening up to us a heavenly realm to say, come through the door. It's all about you, Father. It's all about you. It's all you wanted from the beginning. A relationship with us. But what are we doing? Chasing after the next wind of doctrine? What are we doing? What are we doing, Father? I ask you to forgive us, my Father. <sighs> Let us drink from your word today, Father. Because your word is life.
Thank you, my Father. Amen. Amen. How difficult it is for me to have to even now start to even want to bring a message. As I said, Abba's heart is grieved for his people. Very grieved. And this is why we need to understand the more we go deeper into things, the more we tend to move away from our Messiah. And at the end of the day, we need to be those that are led. He says, the sons of Yahuwah are led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. So this is again, we don't have a lot of sons because the sons are the sheep who hear his voice, who walk as he walks, who does what he does. They're not hirelings. He's not a hireling. He's not doing what he's doing because he's trying to get gain. He's doing what he's doing because he's the one who paid the price. And the problem is that we must be willing to pay that price. And this is why we need to understand our Messiah in a much deeper way. And we need to understand what he has done. Because everything is about him. And the thing that saddens me, and it saddens me to such a degree, is that when I look at the Torah movement, they become so hung up in the next Torah portion and the next thing and the next thing and they seem to just get further and further away from the Messiah and the Ruach of Yahuwah. Do we just become too puffed up in learned? I don't know. But at the end of the day we need to get become more spiritual beings. We need to become more spiritual and we need to become more obedient because if we are spiritual, we are obedient. And this is exactly what the Father is requiring of us now. We need ears to hear like never before. Because the hour is late. And people are still carrying on like there's no tomorrow. Like, let me just live my day for today. And that's all it is. And yes, that's what the Bible says. But the Bible also says a prudent man sees the evil day approaching and he's to prepare for the evil day that is approaching. And now I understand why Father's got us studying the beginning of the Bible and why he's got us studying the end of the Bible for us to understand that the beginning is our foundation and the end is what we are doing right now, understanding that this is book is going to manifest before our eyes. And now he's got us working through Jeremiah and as we work through this Jeremiah, my heart is grieved. It's grieved for when I look at my own life and I see my own life is not in line and it is grieved because I look at the church who represents Messiah, but where are they? I look at the Torah movement who's supposedly the bride, 
And where are they? And I stand back and I say, where, from where have we fallen? From where have we fallen? Because we've fallen from somewhere. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me seeing these things. But the more I, I read my Bible, like in the early hours of this morning, Joseph had said to me that Father had given him chapter 9, 10 and 11 of Isaiah. And then I remember Father had given me Isaiah 9, Ezekiel 9 and Jeremiah 9. So when I read through again Isaiah 9, I'm thinking, Father, it's just the same words being spoken all the time. Your prophets have already been warning. Your prophets have been speaking. Even if one prophet doesn't speak right now, your Bible is already speaking to us and already warning us and telling us the kind of generation that is going to be, the kind of generation that has been, the kind of generation that's always been, and the kind of generation that is still now. And that is why. The level of repentance. I don't think we understand the level of repentance. And so, this is just what Father is sharing. And, and I don't know, it's just Father today just decided he wants to speak. So, Okay, let us just continue with this chapter 4 and we pray that Abba is the one who's going to lead and guide and show us what needs to be done as we come to understand our Messiah as this door. Really understand it. So we read again from Revelation chapter 4 from verse 1 and it says, After this I looked and I saw a door having been opened in the heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. And you see the trumpets are blowing. And what are they blowing? Telling us, come up higher. Come up here. And I shall show you what is to take place after this. Now, you see, this is the thing. We need to come up higher for him to show us. What is coming? If we're not going to come up higher, then how is he going to show us? And this is what we must understand. This is what he's saying, come up higher. Because it's not just to show you what's going to come, but he needs to show you what is in your life that is holding you captive by the enemy. Because I have never seen such onslaught of the enemy as I see it right now. The level, level of deception. The level of deception. The level of... I have never seen in the body of Messiah such division, such um, slandering, attacking, coming up against each other as what I see right now. And that people actually are okay with the fact that they can do this and they think they're going to get away with nothing. I, I don't understand. And I shouldn't even be surprised because the Father keeps reminding me that brother will turn against brother in the last days. And so now, it's not just those that come against you of your immediate family because of maybe the path that you walk, but it's those coming up against you in your own family, which you call a brother and a sister in Messiah. And yet we seem to think that we can just continue to allow the enemy. I, 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 I'm at a place that 
last night I was crying out to the Father and saying, Father, why why are we allowing the enemy to use us like this? Do we not fear? Do we not have a revelation? What is it? But you see, here is the thing. Come up here. And I will show you what has to take place after this. You see, if we don't come up with him, if we don't take the time to sit with him, if it's because it's another book and another thing and another book and another thing and whatever it is, another sermon and another sermon and another thing, and we don't come up here and sit with him, how is he going to show us what is still wrong in our lives? And this is the thing, because when we come to him, the thunder, the lightning, everything on Mount Sinai, what was it about? It was the thunder, it was the lightning, it was the trumpets, it was the shofars blowing, it was loud. And the father was speaking. And what was he speaking? His commands. What he wants. What he requires of his people and we are in a time of getting prepared for Shavuot which is when the commands was given on Mount Sinai and everybody all they want is the power you see this is the problem we 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 are going to fall like the devil had three tests in the wilderness to Messiah well, it was the, the, the test of self-sufficiency, the test of spectacular, and then the test of the power. And so we want the power. So you see, we want the power to be like Messiah, to do the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. We want the power. But we don't want to pay the price to have the power. We don't want to be nothing. We don't want to be, we don't, we don't want to be broken. We don't want to go, no, no, no. We want the power, but we don't want to pay the price. So he's saying, and immediately I came to be in the spirit and I saw a throne set in heavens and one who sat on them, on the throne. So see, who's he seeing that he's sitting on the throne? Because this is what is going to be opened up to us so I'm going to read a bit so that then I can go further into what the father wants to show in terms of what he's revealing to us going deeper into this door that is opening and it says and he who sat there was like jasper and ruby stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance and around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting dressed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And out of the throne came lightnings and thunders, the voices, and seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elua. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures covered with eyes in the front and in the back. And the first living creature was like a lion and the second living creature like a calf and the third living creature had a face like a man and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And so what are these living creatures about and what do they represent? And this is what we're going to look at today for us to understand when he says, come up higher, come up into a throne. What is he wanting to show him? What is he showing him? What is it that he's calling out to him to be able to show him? He's showing him a throne. Who is seated on that throne? Who is the one who is seated on the throne? And who is the one seated at the right hand of the one seated on the throne? So we look at Ezekiel. So let's look at Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 10. And it's interesting because this is Yohanan seeing this, but Ezekiel was taken up. And so 
we read from Ezekiel chapter 1 from verses 4 and it says, And I looked and I saw a whirlwind coming out of the north and a great cloud with fire, fire flashing itself and brightness was all around it and out of its midst like glowing metal out of the midst of the fire and out of the midst of it came what looked like four living creatures. And this was the appearance they had, the likeness of a man. And one had the four faces, and each one had four wings, and their feet were straight feet. And the soles of the feet were like the soles of calves' foot. And they spoke like the appearance of polished bronze. And under their wings, on their four sides, were the hands of a man. And each of the four had faces and wings, and their wings touched one another. They did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. And the likeness of their faces, the faces of a man, and each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side, and each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side, and each of the four had the face of an eagle. Which were their faces, their wings were spread upwards towards each other, towards each touched one another, and two covered their bodies, and each one went straight forward, going wherever the spirit was to go, and they did not turn when they went. And the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches moving back and forth among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went lightning. And the four living creatures ran back and forth like the appearance of a flash of lightning. And I looked at the living creatures, and I saw a wheel on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheel was like their works, and was like the appearance of beryl. And all four had the same form. The appearance of their works was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel and when they went they went in one of the four directions they did not turn aside when they went and their rims were high and awesome and their rims were covered with eyes all around the four of them and when the living creatures went the wheels went beside them and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth the wheels were lifted up wherever the spirit was to go they went because there the spirit went and the wheels were lifted together with them and the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels and the likeness was over the heads of the living creatures and expands like the appearance of an awesome crystal stretched out over their heads. And under the expanse, their wings were straight up towards another. Each one had two which covered one side, and each one had two which covered the other side of the body. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty, a tumulant, like the noise of an army. And when they stood still, they let down their wings. And a voice came from above the expanse that was over their heads. When they stood, they dropped their wings. And above the expanse over their heads was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. And on the likeness of the throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man high above it. And from the appearance of his waist and upwards, I saw what looked like glowing metal with the appearance of fire all around within and from the appearance of his waist and downwards, I saw what looked like fire brightness all round, as the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, as was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the lightness of the esteem of Yahuwah. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. And so you see, who is representing these four living creatures. And this is exactly what you see. He sat there like a jasper, 
So you see it speaking in Revelation chapter 4 and it says, And immediately I came to be in the Spirit and I saw a throne and set in the heavens one who sat on the throne. And he was who sat there was like a jasper, a ruby stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. So you see there is already the confirmation of what Ezekiel is seeing when Ezekiel is seeing a throne. And around the throne were 24 thrones and on the throne I saw 24 elders sitting and out of the throne came lightning, thunder. Did we see these living, these living creatures? There was thunder, there was lightning, there was fire and the seven lamps of the fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of Yahuwah and before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures covered with with eyes in front and in the back. And so you see, what are these four living creatures representing? This is all around a throne. These living creatures are part of Abba Yahuwah and his throne and Messiah. And so what is it representing? And so we are going to look at this today to understand these four living creatures, to understand this throne and who is seated on the throne this man that is lifted up and so right in the beginning we saw that it talks about a door and Yeshua is the door and he said I am the way I am the truth I am the life no one comes to the father except through me so you see if we want to get back to the father there is only one way it's the way of Yeshua. It's He said, I am the way, I am the life. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the man that we're seeing now there is who? It must be Messiah Yeshua. And so the way that we enter is the way of the door that we enter to the tabernacle, because that is, when we understand the tabernacle, we understand everything of just as we went deep last week to understand the door of the shepherd. Today we need to understand the door of the gate of the entrance to the tabernacle. So the gate has been opened, the door has been opened. We had a look last week and we saw that the door stands for an entrance, a way, a passage into the door through which the sheep are to go in and out. And this is a portal. It is about the kingdom of heaven. And it is a gate. It is the opening and the closing of a door of a gate. And so if we go have a look at Exodus chapter 27 verses 16. It says, And for the gate of the courtyard... A covering 20 cubits long of blue and purple <coughs> and scarlet and fine woven linen made by a weaver. Four columns and four sockets. So at the entrance of the outer court. So we look in verse 9 and it says, And you shall make the courtyard of the dwelling place of the south side screens for the courtyard made of fine woven linen 100 cubits long for one side so in exodus chapter 27 verses 9 it talks about the screen all around this tabernacle that is going to be there this is the outside this is the outer court this is the screen around and it is made of fine white linen and then there was going to be a gate. There was going to be a door, a gate, an entrance into the courtyard. And that gate, that entrance is made up of four, is made up of the material that is going to be purple, scarlet, fine woven linen made by a weaver, four columns and four sockets. So the columns are going to have white, it's going to have scarlet, it's going to have purple and it's going to have blue because it's got scarlet, white, scarlet, purple, 
blue, which is on this gate. So today we are going to look a little bit deeper into understanding the four living creatures. Who does it represent? What is this whole thing representing about this four living creatures that have four faces? They've got this fire and they wheels and they're turning and what is this all about? And it's all by the throne. And it's his spirit is moving. And so we have a look and we see we're going to start by being able to first look at the white. So the gate is made up of these four colors. And this is the way. So you have to enter through the gates. Just like Yeshua says, unless you go through the gate. You have to enter through the gate of the outer court. You have to enter through this gate. And what is this gate? This gate is Yeshua himself when he says, I am the way. This is the gate of salvation. This is the gate of where Yeshua came to bring us salvation. This is the first gate. We must go through this first gate as we receive salvation. Because that's the first gate. And so you see, there's no salvation through any other way. Salvation is through the way of the gate. And the gate is Messiah Yeshua. And so if there's no Messiah Yeshua... There is no salvation because that is the gate. He's the gate. He said, I am the way. He's the gate that is the way and his way is what he needs to show us the way. He's going to show us the way of salvation. So around the tabernacle you get this white. So even in this gate you've got white, you've got scarlet, red, you've got purple and you've got blue. So white is the fine linen. It is the righteousness of Yeshua. Yeshua becomes the righteousness of Yah. He's the one that became our righteousness. So when we have a look at Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 8, so let's go to Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 8, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him praise, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife prepared herself. And to her it was given to be dressed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the set-apart ones. So you see, this fine linen is the very color white. And what does the white represent? It's representing righteousness. But what is this righteousness? It's representing the word G1342, Dikaios, and it's righteous, Observing divine laws, upright, virtuous, keeping the commands of Yah, innocent, faultless, whose way of thinking, feeling and acting is wholly conformed to the will of Yah, being innocent and set apart. This is what Yahshua fulfilled. So, if he has fulfilled this, now you know this is when this morning... Father really just showed me. So we have the audacity to say, I am the righteousness of Yahshua because Yahshua has become my righteousness. Okay? So yes, he became your righteousness. So does he become your righteousness so now that you can quote and say that he's the righteousness, he's your righteousness, and that means you don't need to walk out righteousness. Wow. That was a revelation for me this morning. So if he died so that he could resurrect to give me righteousness and he is the righteousness of Yahshua, then if I am in him, then I should be walking out righteousness because he's already conquered that 
by becoming my righteousness. But now what do we do? Oh, he paid the price for sin, so I'm no longer a sinner. So therefore I continue to sin. Oh, I remember this man in Israel that we stayed at a guest house, and this is the what he said to me. No, 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 no. Yeshua has paid the price for the sin. No sin that I'm going to do now is going to make any difference because he's already paid for my sin. So therefore, he could just continue his sinful way. And this is what we saw him doing when we were in that guest house, was just sinning. And we just had to endure it because he was believing that because Yeshua has paid for his sin, he can just continue sinning. But you see, this is the revelation that we need to understand. The grace of Yeshua has been given to us to say no to unrighteousness. To say no to everything that is not set apart unto him. And so let us just, as the scripture is coming up in my mind, let us just go to Titus. Titus. Chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Verse 11 to 14. So, the saving grace, the saving gift of Alua. Now that gift, if you go look at it, it's the grace. The saving grace of Alua has appeared to all men. This is who Yoshua is. He became our salvation. He became our righteousness. He's the one that has become righteous for us so that now we have no excuse to not be righteous because if he lives in me, the righteousness of Yoshua, then he's going to give me the Ruach of Yehua because he says, I come to give you another comforter so that the comforter is the one who's going to teach you. He's the teacher. To teach you how to walk in the ways of Abba Yahuwah. So listen to what he says in verse 12. So he says, For the saving grace of Elua has appeared to all men, instructing us to remove wickedness and worldly lusts. So how can we have received Messiah Yeshua and we say he lives in us and he say, we say he leads us, we say that he's our savior, our master, our ruler, our, our, our king and we continue to live in worldly lusts and we continue to live in wickedness and to live sensibly, righteously and reverently in the present age. Now listen. Looking for the blessed expectation and esteemed appearance of the great Alua and Savior, Yeshua Messiah. Now listen to what is the purpose Messiah comes. So he became our salvation. He became our righteousness. For what? Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness. So now he's come to redeem us from all our Torahlessness. So now, do we have an excuse to turn around and say, well, I don't need to keep it because at the end of the day, Yoshua has already paid the price for it. No, because Yoshua has paid the price for it, he has done it. If I'm called to walk as he walked, then I am to do what he did. And now I have no excuse to not do it because why? He's already paid the price to make sure that now I am able to do it. So he says who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, all Torahlessness, all unrighteousness, because at the end of the day, what is righteousness? Righteousness is keeping the commands of Yahuwah, where our feeling and acting is wholly conformed to the will of Yah. So we are being led by him. We are acting like him. We are being his hands extended upon the earth and we are being set apart. So he says, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, Torahlessness, to cleanse for himself a people, his own possession. So you see, he wants a people that becomes his own possession ardent for good works so that they can be equipped now to walk in the good works. But you see, are these ministries out there Teaching us 
that we are supposed to come back to his ways, come back to crucifying the flesh, not elating our flesh even more, not acquiring more of the flesh ways, but neglecting, but crucifying the lustful desires of the flesh man, the mind, the will and the emotions that exalts itself above Yahuwah, because at the end of the day, it's that soul man that's made up of the mind, the will and emotions that is the one that doesn't want to submit to Yahuwah. Because he wants a possession ardent for good works. He wants a possession for himself. And so at the end of the day, this is why he turned around and he says, if Yahushua has fulfilled it, he leads us then so that we will walk as he walked. So if he walked in righteousness, keeping Abba Yahuwah's commands, then we do not have this idea to say, well, I am the righteousness of Yahuwah, so therefore now I don't need to keep anything because he's kept everything for me. But what the heck kind of thing is that? Then I am to walk as he walked, so however he walked and whatever he kept, I am called to walk and to keep. So the color white symbolizes purity. It symbolizes innocence. It's honesty, cleanliness. White is associated with righteousness. So the screen around the courtyard of this tabernacle we see has everything to do with Yeshua being the gate and the door because the screen is now Keep, now, look at the screen. The screen is excluding those that are on the outside, outside in the world. So what is it doing? It separates us from the world and the worldly ways. And it becomes our right, he becomes our righteousness so that he's given us a pattern that we are to go through in order to be able to come back to the Father. So understand, that is why the Father has said to me, I really need to be able to teach this tabernacle very, uh, in, in, it, it's, if, you, and if you really understand the tabernacle in its fullness, and this is really, I need to do this, and I don't know if Father's going to have to give me the grace of how I'm going to do this. Must I do it in a course? Must I do it in, in, in however it is? I don't know. I already did this in a conference. But I don't think I went as deep as what the Father wants me to go now. Because he said to me, he said to me last year when I did the conference last year, he said to me, my child, this is what my people need to know. Because when they have the understanding of the fullness of this, they will have the understanding of what it means. Salvation, sanctification, glorification. Salvation, I am the way. Sanctification, I am the truth. And glorification is the holy of holies to come into the fullness of glory. And because they don't understand the pattern, they're trying to be sheep that are trying to go through every other gate. There is only one gate. And the gate is to understand that he is the one who's brought us the salvation. And what does that salvation entail? He's the one that has brought us into this tabernacle and there is a way that needs to be done. And that's why you can't go through another way. The way is the very first, the, the very first piece of, 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 of um, furniture that you're going to get there is a brazen altar, which means you have to die. You have to give yourself on an altar just like he did. So now we turn around and we say, no, Yeshua died. He gave himself for, for me. I don't need to die. I just need to live for him now. So to live for him is to die for him. To live for him is to live as he lived. To live for him is to be able to be set apart as he was set apart, to walk as he walked and do what he did. And this is why we're missing it. Because we're trying to enter through every other gate. We're trying to go about it through every other way. So I get saved and instead of me being preached at the church that I need to crucify my flesh nature, I need to crucify my mind, my will and my emotions, my mind needs to line up with the mind and the will of Yahuwah, 
And some people pride themselves that this is what they walk in, but yet at the end of the day, they listen to deceptive voices at the end of the day. Because there is a way that seems right unto man, but its way leads to death. Because there's many spirits speaking. And not all is the spirit of Yahuwah. There's a spirit of divination that speaks. Let's not forget, Bilam was one that what? Let's think. He was a prophet, but he was a prophet of Baal. So he still prophesied accurately by the mouth of the father. The father used his mouth and prophesied, but he was still a Baal prophet because he was a diviner. He was into divination. And so we must understand that this is why he turns around and he says, you have to abide by the pattern. I am that gate into this tabernacle and you need to follow me. And that is why no servant is greater than the master. If I was ridiculed, I was rejected, I was persecuted, I was scourged, I was spat on, I was crucified, I was impaled in the end, so will you be if you call to follow me. If they accept my words, they will accept yours. If they did not accept my words, they will not accept yours. But yet, we get ourselves all bent out of shape. And I'd speak for myself. I don't even speak for anybody else. I get myself all bent out of shape when people come up against me. But if all I'm doing is trying to follow my Messiah, then if they didn't accept his words, they aren't going to accept mine either. And if they don't walk as he did, then they're not going to be able to accept anything else that we are doing either. And so the pattern is the pattern. But you see, there's many people trying to enter through another gate. They're trying to obtain the power, but not through the right gate. They are trying to go into places where they go into heavenly realms to obtain power in the heavenly realms, but they are not coming through the correct process. And I, I warn you today, and I say to you, you are opening yourself, yourself up more and more to the demonic realm. More and more, you are opening yourself up in the demonic realm. And I have seen friends of mine that have been taken out terribly through these things. And so he separates us. He separates us from the world. He says, come out from among them. Come out, come out from among them. You cannot be continuing in the mixed seed, drinking from cisterns that is still polluted. It's going to lead you astray. Do you not understand? A little leaven leavens the whole lot. How long have I been saying? A little leaven is going to leaven the whole lot. So he was the spotless pure lamb. He was the unleavened bread. He became our perfect sin offering. He's the servant. He came as the suffering servant, Ben Yosef, the one who had to suffer even though he was innocent, just like Joseph. Yosef did what was right. Yosef did not allow himself to be taken out by Jezebel. Yosef had to stand. Elijah had to stand in the face of the bold prophets and not be taken out by Jezebel. But most of the father's people have been led astray by Jezebel. It's spirits that lead them into sick beds in the end. But Yosef had to stand. He had to be humble. He had to go deeper with the father. He had to trust the father in the face of much struggle being in confinement and not being free. And so we have a look and we see when I'm not going to cover this entire tabernacle, I am just going to cover the colors and the four living creatures 
and to understand these four living creatures and these cover and these colors because this is like i said it it's a it's a teaching that i think needs to be covered as a no, I, don't, I don't know father will give me the wisdom of how to do this and so he is the entrance to the door which is the white which he speaks of himself as being a servant he's the servant of man he's the servant so one of the living creatures that we see is the ox it's the calf that calf is an ox because remember when we read it in Ezekiel 1 verse 10 it says the ox so it is the heifer so interesting, Yeshua became our red heifer, the one that was without spot, without wrinkle. He was the perfect red heifer, that his ashes of the red heifer is what would be able to atone for the sin. And so he becomes the ox, he becomes the servant, the one who is without spot, without wrinkle, he's without sin. And he's the one who comes to lay his life down as a servant. And interesting how he said, no servant is greater than his master. So he's the ox, the red heifer. And so the white around, the white that we see on that door of the four colors, of the four living creatures that we're going to see, the ox is the white. Because he was the pure, spotless lamb. The one that was without sin. The one that was pure. He's the, the creature, which is the servant. And in the Gospel of Mark, he speaks a lot about he's the servant. And so we understand him as being the servant specifically through the Gospel of Mark. Because interesting, four living creatures, four colors, and four gospels. And this is really when we see, as we he's saying he's the way, and then he's the way, and he comes and he dies. And how does he die? He comes with the second color, which is the red, the scarlet. And this is the next living creature, which is the man. And he's the man, he speaks, he's the son of man. And this is the gospel of Luke, as the son of man. He comes and he says, I'm the son of man, the son of man, the son of man. And this is red, which is scarlet. And he's the word that was made flesh. So we go read in John chapter 1, from verse 1, and he says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Allah, and the word was Allah. So you see, how do we separate them when they are one? He said in John chapter 10, verses 30, the Father and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because the Father and I are one. And that is why they seated in this throne, and yet they are one. And yet there is still many people, even in this messianic movement, that want to put the Son as not being the Father. They don't want to give him that that place of that he is the father and so this is why we get into trouble and this is why so many people eventually then get to the place of Yeshua just takes a back seat and then at the end of the day they convert to Judaism because all of a sudden there's no need for Messiah Yeshua what's the need for Messiah Yeshua I now have the father I have no need of the son how do you separate them I don't understand don't understand how you can separate something that is a chad. In Hebrew, the name, the the when you say chad, it means one, which is one. What that which is one cannot be separated. They are one, and that is what he said. And just go a little bit forward. Keep your finger there. John chapter ten. Make a note of it here in your Bible. Look and see what he says. John chapter ten. I and the Father are one. We are Echad. We are Alua. We are one. 
And he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Allah, and the word was Allah. He's in the beginning, and, and with he was in the beginning with Allah, and all came to be through him. And without him, not even one came to be that came to be. So what more do we want to understand? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So you see, you're seeing the fire, you're seeing this glory, you're seeing all of this light and lightning and everything. When your sure comes, he's going to come with lightning. And all eyes are going to see. There was a man sent from Allah whose name was Yohanan. This one came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, and all might believe through him. He was not the light, but that he might bear witness of that light. He was the true light, which enlightens every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, and the world did not know him. The world did not know him. You see, this is the problem. People don't really know him. And why don't they know him? Because they don't have that intimacy with him. They don't really understand his pattern and his way. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as have received him, to them he gave the authority to become children of Allah to those believing in his name. So you see, those believing in his name, they become children. But then we need to mature to become sons who were born not of blood nor of the desire of the flesh nor of the desire of man but of Allah and the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us so there we go the word became flesh so he became flesh he became man he came as man became flesh and pitched his tent among us, and we saw his esteem, and, and esteem as of an only brought forth of a father, complete in favor and truth. So you see, favor, grace, and truth. We cannot have grace and not walk in truth, because it's all about spirit and truth. And so we must understand that he shed his blood, that's the color red. It's the color of man. It's the color that man was created out of. The dust of the earth, Adam. The color red. The color of the dust of the earth. And interesting, the color of the blood that falls to the dust of the earth that was from the first murder of Cain that now cries out for vengeance and interesting how the blood of Yahushua had to fall to that ground to redeem the ground so that we don't receive the punishment of that sin of that death and so the blood of the animals that constantly needs to be spilt in order to be able to come and bring purity to be able to cleanse the people, but never removes the sin. Because it only covered the sin, but didn't remove the sin. But now, this is the Passover, you see. Yeshua becomes the Passover lamb. He becomes the unleavened bread. And this is where you see everything in the outer court of the brazen altar of where Yeshua comes, becomes the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice, the perfect man that has now given his all and said, it is finished. Now you raise up and you do what I've done. He came to die to raise for himself more sons and daughters of Yahuwah. He was the first fruits, the firstborn. And now that he's the first fruits and the firstborn, he was the firstborn of Abba Yahuwah to be able to birth forth more sons and daughters of Yahuwah. 
So he came and he became the perfect man that died and resurrected to unite us back to the Father. So you see, so he had to go and become that Passover lamb. And then he says, at his resurrection, he says, I will give you another. Tarry, tarry, to be filled. Because now, I am going to give you the spirit of my father. It's the Ruach of Yahuwah. Because the father and the son are one. So it's the Ruach of Abba Yahuwah, his Ruach, that is now going to be able to be given to the people. And what is the purpose of the Ruach being given? So you see, everything about the color red, everything about the, the ox was the set-apartness. He came to be able to now come and bring us salvation out of darkness into light, out of that which was dark, out of that which was unclean, out of everything that was of the world that was unclean and dark, out of this Egyptian mindset in Egypt and the ways of the world and the customs and the traditions of the world to come out of that and come into a set-apart place, into a tabernacle where he becomes the door to lead you into a pattern that we need to walk out. And then we get the next color, which is the color purple. Now that is the next gate. So you see, the first gate, there was one gate. And that gate has got all four colors. And all four colors is again upon the next gate. There is another gate. And this is when Yeshua spoke and he said, I am the way. That is the salvation way. That is when we need to understand he became the man, he became the flesh, he became the one that was sacrificed on the altar as the blood that was shed for us. That that blood has come to, to restore us into covenant with the Father. Because it's all about covenant. And that blood is to reinstate the covenant that was broken because we went astray from the Father. And now that blood that has been shed, he became man, dwelt among us, showed us the way to walk, showed us the way of where we need to walk as he walked, showed us the way so that now he does, resurrects, is seated at the right hand of the Father, is constantly making intercession on our behalf, making intercession. And because he was flesh, like we are, he understands our weaknesses and therefore, as we cry out to him, he comes as the deliverer because he was the one who delivered. He's the deliverer. He comes to deliver us and he comes to help us. And he just helps us because he's given us his ruach to be able to help us to walk out his way. So then we get the color purple and the color purple is the next living creature, which is the color of the lion. And so the lion is the next living creature representing Yahushua. And that is the color purple, is the color royalty. And that is the color of the king of kings. He's the lion of the tribe of Yehuda. He's the king that comes, that is coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. So let's look and see Revelation chapter 5 verses 5 and in Revelation chapter 5 verses 5 it says and the, and one of the elders said to me do not weep see the lion of the tribe of Yehuda the root of David overcame to open the scroll and to loosen its seven seals so you see he came he paid the price he died and now he's the one that's got the key He's the one that opens the door. He's the one that opens the scroll. And he's the one that leads the, he's the one that opens the door that he says, now I am the truth that opens into the tabernacle. And this is where we're seeing the seven spirits. We're seeing the table of showbread. We're seeing the altar of incense all in that place. And this is the place of where sanctification takes place. Because Yeshua came 
He died for us. Salvation is a free gift. That was the outer court. That's the free gift that you received and that I received. A free gift from him, salvation. But you see, for sanctification, it's going to cost us everything because sanctification means I need to go through a process. I need to go and first of all, I can't even go into a sanctification process if I haven't first come to a place of where I've had to lay myself down on a brazen altar like he did to be able to come to a place of understanding that no longer I that live, but Messiah Yoshua is going to live in me and through me, the hope of glory, which means I is no longer on the throne, which means I don't live for myself, I don't do my own thing, I don't go my own way, I live for my Father, I go His way, I do what He wants. I'm led by Him. Nothing of what I own is mine. Nothing of what you own is yours. Everything belongs to him. It's on loan to you and he can remove it any time he wants. So your job is not yours. Your children are not yours. Your finances are not yours. Nothing is yours. Everything is on loan to you. And at any time, he can remove it. At any time. Because we came with nothing into this earth and we will leave with nothing from this earth. And everything on this earth is given to us as a loan. And so in Revelation 19 verses 16, just let's have a look at Revelation 19 verses 16. In Revelation 19 16 it says, And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, Sovereign of Sovereigns, King of Kings, and Master of Masters. Which people would say Lord of Lords. So that's the only time he's Lord. He's Lord over all other gods. He is the master. He is the king of all kings. There is no other. He is the great I am. And that is why when he said to those, those men, when they were about to arrest him, and they said, um, who are you? He said, who are you looking for? We are looking for Yeshua of Nazareth, I am. And when he said, I am, the men fell back. What power came out of him when he spoke, I am? He was at that moment standing in fullness of who Abba Father is as I am. And so the color purple really represents an earthly authority because Yeshua was the earthly king. He's our earthly king. He's the one who is the king of kings. He's coming as the king of kings. He came as a suffering servant, but he's going to be the one who's going to come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. You see, because the color purple is the color of anointing, a kingly anointing. It is the color of royalty. It is the color of elegance. Remember, in those days, purple was very expensive and it was only the wealthy and the rich that could wear purple. So it was his authority upon the earth that he was a king. Interesting, I saw something today that really caught my attention. It is the color of separation. How interesting. Because now... When you, <laughs> I just had to laugh at that because I remember there was a time for a long time when I first, like when Elsie first met me, I could, I was only wearing purple. She said, do you not have another color? Do you only wear purple? Oh, I love purple. And I think that that is why the father brought that color because I was going through this separation place. I was being separated. And it's interesting that it says that the color Purple is the color of separation because that is the color of when we enter into the holy place, which is the color of when we go through the next door into the holy place. And that is now where the sanctification process starts. So isn't that interesting how that is the color of separation because that's the color of where you need to be able to come into separation, where you set yourself apart to be taught by the Ruach, to be taught by his word. And so 
This is where he is the one who is king. And when we look at the book of Matthew, he speaks about him being, it's all about the kingdom. That it's, he talks about the kingdom of Yahuwah. And a lot of Matthew is putting in place the kingdom of Yahuwah. The kingdom of Yahuwah is like a man who goes out and, and you know, it's a lot about the kingdom. And he rules over our lives. This is the place of when he becomes king over our lives. Because you see, we have already given our lives at the brazen altar. We've gone through a brazen laver where we need to be washed by the blood. So the blood has been shed. Then we need to be washed by the water and the blood. That's why there is an altar of, that's why there is a brazen altar where blood gets, gets, um, gets uh, spilt and then there is the brazen laver for the washing that needs to wash the blood and that's why what came out of the side of Yeshua water and blood because it's the water of the word and the blood that has come to set us free the blood that's brought deliverance the blood that's brought the, the, the set apartness that's come to cleanse us and purify us but what does the water do as well the water also cleanses and purifies so that's why you would have to get them the the um um you would have to be able to get the the this was the place of where the priests would come and they would be washed they would be cleansed and you would see how they wash their hands and they wash their feet so interesting, this is where Yeshua has paid the price from the side when they pierce him with the water and the blood coming out of him and that water and that blood, we have been cleansed by the blood and then the water cleanses the hands, our works, and then they have to wash their feet. So the works of our hands has been washed by the water by the by the water as well and then they were told to wash their feet which is our walk our life's walk so you see and yet when like i explained when the father gave me the revelation of how he was pierced in the hands how he was pierced on the feet how he was pierced in the side how he was pierced with a crown of thorns on his head and how every place where the blood ran is the place of where he's come to set us free. But the brazen laver is also where they had to now wash the blood off them from the hands and the feet. And so our walk must be set apart unto the Father, our hands must be set apart unto the Father, that we only do his works and we only walk as he walked. And so... So this is where he becomes, so once we have gone through that process, then we come into the process of sanctification, which is now when we come into the holy place where we start to allow the word to become the guide that we need to live by and the seven spirits of Yahuwah that needs to lead us. And so, this is now where he becomes king over our lives. So do you see where a lot of people will find themselves, maybe they're still in the place of where they haven't quite come to a brazen altar and laid down their lives. And then this is why everybody wants the power. And they're obtaining this power through other means. Because if he hasn't become king of your life and if you haven't gone through the process of that brazen altar, then he becomes king. And then he rules over our lives. And we will be the sheep answering his call. Because now he's the one ruling over our lives. And then we receive, this is also where we receive the seven spirits. So the spirit is the one leading us into his spoken word that he speaks to us, this is the way, walk you in it, you've got to do this, you've got to go there, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. But then it's also the truth, which is the table of showbread, the bread of life. The bread is the, the bread that 
is the word that became flesh that we need to live by. And like I said, this is really the book of Matthew. And then we go through the next veil. And then the veil is into the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies is what color? It's the color blue. And it's the color of where we see the eagle. And this is the eagle. And this is the one that is in the heavenly realm. And this is the one that is the priest. Yeshua then becomes our high priest. And this is the eagle where Yeshua is our high priest and he can see everything. And this is the color of the book of John. And it's interesting how it was the disciple John, Yohanan, that Father chose in order to give revelation. So this is the color of when we come into the place of the Holy of Holies, where Father gives the revelation, where we start to operate as a priest, where he starts to reveal his heart, and where we can then start to be receiving the revelation that comes from him. And he is our heavenly bridegroom, our high priest, and this is the place of the glory realm. And this is the place of glorification. And so you see, we want to all have the glory, but there's a process in order to get the glory. And I have really just touched on a little bit of the tabernacle to understand the four living creatures, to understand what the Father is revealing through Yeshua being the seven spirits of Yahuwah, Yeshua being the four living creatures, and this door that has been made open to come into a heavenly realm, because you see the eagle is the one that needs to see in that heavenly realm. It needs to hear, it needs to see, it needs to speak. It needs to be able to be the light that needs to shine. So Yeshua becomes our high priest who is the perfect light. And so by the time the person comes to the place of the Holy of Holies, there's nothing left of them because the only person that is there is Yeshua the high priest who stands before the Father because your flesh is no longer on the throne. And so people will no longer see you, but they see him. And they'll no longer hear you, but they hear him. Because you become one with him. Because it's no longer about visitation, but it's about habitation. Where he wants to inhabit. And he wants you to become his hands extended, his feet extended, his mouth extended, his eyes extended. And that you can become, come into that Holy of Holies, a place of where it's a speaking place. Where he can speak. Where he can reveal his heart to his people. And this is what our Messiah has fulfilled all of this. And like I said, I've really just touched a little portion and so I want to close off with Colossians 1. We're going to close off with Colossians chapter 1 and then we continue again next week. Colossians chapter 1. And Colossians chapter 1 from verses 12 we are going to read until verse 22. Give thanks to Yahuwah who has made us fit to share in the inheritance of the set-apart ones in the light. So you see, we need to be able to be those that are going to share in the inheritance of the set-apart ones in the light, the light of Messiah Yahshua, who has delivered us from the authority of darkness, 
So you see, he came to set us free from that authority of darkness that was holding us captive and transferred us into the reign of the son of his love. And so when the son of his love is living within us, then we become the sons of his love. In whom we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So you see, he comes to forgive us so that we no longer have the punishment of the sins because now we have no excuse to continue to sin because now he's already paid the price, given his blood for us so that we no longer need to continue in our sinful way. Who is the likeness of the invisible Alua, the firstborn of creation? Now, you see, you need to understand something. You see, this is the difference what people do not understand. The people think that once Yoshua comes, he's paid the price, he's paid all. I don't, I don't need to do anything. He's done everything. But what you do not understand is that, you see, the difference is the blood of goats and bulls did not remove the sin. The blood of goats and bulls only cleansed, only covered the sin. The blood of Yoshua Mashiach has set you free so that you no longer need to sin and you no longer need to receive the punishment for that sin if you confess and you repent and you turn from your wicked way. That's why Yeshua would say to that woman, go and sin no more. You have been set free. Go and sin no more. Verse 15 says, who is in the likeness of the invisible Allure, the firstborn of all creation? So you see, he became the firstborn of all creation because now he wants more sons and daughters. He was the first fruits of the son. The first fruit, the son became the first fruit offering and he's the firstborn of the resurrection. He's the firstborn, but now he's going to have many other sons and daughters. Because in him we were created, all that are in the heavens and that is on the earth, visible and invisible, whether th thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through him and for him. There you see, all. So this is what John, Yohanan, is seeing in the heavens. He's seated on this throne. He's saying, he is the one, visible and visible, where the thrones or rulers or principalities or authorities all have been created through him and for him. And he is before all. And in him all hold together. Nothing is without him. So I understand, how do you take him out of the equation? How do we join with Jews and take him out of the equation when Jews don't even bring him into the equation? Nothing of what the Jews teach bring Messiah into the equation. And he's the head of the body, the, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that he might become the one who is first in all. So you see, he's the head. There is no other head. Now, if we just get to the place of letting him be head and letting him be able to rule, then there will be no more division in the body because then the body will operate with only one head. Because in him all the completeness was well pleased to dwell. And through him to completely restore, to favor all unto himself. So you see, he came to restore all unto himself whether on earth or in the heavens. So you see, he is the king of kings on the earth. He is the eagle in the heavens. He is the high priest in heaven, the one seated at the right hand of the Father, the high priest making intercession on our behalf day and night, having made peace through the blood of his stake. So you see, for the blood that has been shed, he's already paid the price, is made peace. And you who once were estranged and enemies in the mind by wicked works. So you see, look at where we are enemies. Please take note. We were enemies in the mind. 
because it's the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's the soul. That's why, listen to what Abba Father said when he spoke to Noah, they were continually wicked in their thoughts, were continually wicked all day long. And so, and the enemy is in the mind by wicked works. As a man thinks, so he will become. Because his thoughts will become his words and his words will become his actions. But now he has completely restored to favor in the body of, the, of his flesh through death to present you set apart and blameless and unreproved before him. So you see, he has come. He has become the four living creatures for us. He has become the way, the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the holy place, the place of sanctification. It's the truth. It's the place in the holy place. It's the color of the purple. It's the kingly anointing. It's the place of where we now have sanctification. It's the place of where you've got now the table of showbread, the word, the truth. The seven spirits of Yahuwah, led by the Ruach of Yahuwah, that brings the perfect worship at the altar of incense because your life becomes a living sacrifice unto him as worship not just the worship that you bring from your lips, but the worship of your life that brings glory to him. And then he picks you up and brings you into the Holy of Holies, which is where the life is, which is where the narrow path is, which is where the glorification is. And this is what he has died in his flesh to present us to become set apart so that now we can become those that can be reunited in the holy of holies which is now where the tree of life is because that's where the life is where we now eat only from the tree of life from that which he speaks from that which he gives and we are not contaminated by all these other things because we're not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We are only eating from the tree of life. Which comes from his mouth. Which comes from his word. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, my father. Oh, wow. What a powerful word, father. To be able to stand back and Look and see everything that Yeshua has already fulfilled for us. And he's already become the first fruits offering, the one that's paved the way, the one that has come and one to set us apart to become blameless and unreprovable before you so that we can be those that can come into the Holy of Holies to be able to once again have fellowship with you in the Garden of Eden because there's the world there's the, the place where um, the outer, there's the outer court, there's the holy place, and the holy of holies is once again the tree of life, to eat from the tree of life, which is what we are being called to do in Revelation chapter 22, verses 14, those that will eat from the tree of life once again, that place where we do not eat from a tree that has brought us into good, and evil, but it's the works of the flesh, but it's instead drinking from the water that you have to give from your throne. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I thank you. When we stand back and when we see everything that Messiah Yahushua has already fulfilled, Abba, I get so grieved just to think that people want to follow rabbis. I don't even exalt Messiah Yoshua. How do we do that, Father? And we will take their teachings above the teachings of your word. Because man is just once again becoming more religious and coming into religious systems. And then there are those that want to make void of your commands of your Torah ways 
and the foundations that was given to us in this Bible. And yet they want to not lay claim to the heavenly realms. Oh, have a I ask you to please forgive. Help us, Father, to be able to truly be a set-apart remnant people that will walk before you in spirit and in truth because you spoke to your son and you said, Yoshua spoke and he said, My father is looking for true worshippers, those that are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so those are the true worshippers that you're calling, those true worshippers that are going to be able to offer you incense in that place of sanctification where their lives has become a coal that lights the fire and they're no longer chasing after every wind of doctrine but they are chasing after you and wanting to hear what you have to say and so Abba I just want to thank you for this time I thank you for where you speak and for where you reveal and for us to be able to be those that would understand your heart even when we don't understand much. Thank you, Father, that we will just be willing and obedient servants as your sure was our first fruit. And he says, no servant is greater than his master. And to Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you for this time in your name. Amen.